Sorry, it's the way I negotiate. It's the way I negotiate. It's done very well for me over the years. Love him or hate him, Donald Trump is a businessman. He made this known when he wrote The Art of the Deal in 1987. He listed principles of negotiation in the book, and this is a brief synopsis in an INC.com article called The 11 Winning Negotiating Tactics from Donald Trump in The Art of the Deal. And number five, he talks about using leverage. The worst thing you could do in a deal is to seem desperate to make it. That makes the other guy smell weakness. And then you're toast. Tears of frustration I hold inside. But if you walk away, you'll make this grown man cry. Don't leave. Don't leave me, girl. If you're a Gen Xer like myself, this is negotiation. This is what we grew up with. What's the negotiation sound like? Can we go back to the days our love was strong? Can you tell me how a perfect love goes wrong? Can somebody tell me how to get things back the way they used to be? Oh God, give me the reason. I'm down on bended knee. I'll never walk again until you come back to me. I'm down on bended knee. We grew up with this. I don't really need to lick the lyrics because I know them. I used to sing this to girlfriends even. Question, what would Donald Trump say about this negotiation tactic? Do you think he would approve of it? Do you think it would work? Do you think he thinks it works? A man who isn't a slave to his sexual urges is a focused man. A focused man is a dangerous man. Now remember what Donald Trump said, use your leverage. The worst thing you could possibly do in a deal is to seem desperate to make it. That makes the other guy smell weakness and then you're done. Think about it. As black men in particular, we are kind of trained or taught that it's a treat for us. So for a lot of men do is we we want to jump through the hoop so we can get the treat the physical affection and so if it's money muscles game it's wine and dine if it's whatever it is the little treats that you're doing not for yourself you're doing to curry favor is something that's natural to us and no matter if you're at home in america or abroad dealing with foreign women it doesn't matter if you can control your sexual urges, your biology, you can have a better negotiation position with any of the women you're dealing with. Of course, we understand controlling your biology is very difficult, but if you're able to do that, it will give you a much better negotiating position with the young ladies, whether you're back home or you're abroad. There's a second negotiating tactic that, that we have in our disposal that Steph is cold, the young king is gonna to explain to you. All women need attention. No matter where she's from, no matter her relationship status, no matter where, what she do, it don't matter. She needs attention. And if she doesn't get attention, what happens to her, fellas? She literally goes crazy. She literally loses her mind. She literally can't even function right because she's not Maybe you don't trust Steph is cold. Maybe he's too young for your liking. Fair, I trust the young lion. How about we try someone else that you might trust in alpha male strategies? Women need attention and validation just like plants need sunlight and water. They can't live without it, guys. So if you ain't gonna be telling a woman how beautiful she is, and you ain't gonna be talking to her on the phone, and you ain't gonna be texting, well, what the hell you think she gonna do? Just not worry about it. You know what she'll end up doing? She'll end up every time she coming around you, every five minutes asking you, think I'm beautiful? How my hair look? How my dress look? She must get that validation from somewhere. Let her ass go get it from the simps. In my two decades overseas, I have not once heard a gentleman here refer to a young lady as queen or goddess. I haven't heard it. I've heard San and Sama, which is basically Mr. and Mrs. and Sama is very honorific but that's very specific but out other than that it was basic common respect for whatever reason i guess with our shared past in america we are trying to compensate for some of the ills that's happened and we use goddess and king and queen and things of that nature but you don't have to use those words to be respectful one of the things that I think is very important for us to understand, especially for gentlemen, 
because you're in this space, of course, is that attention is valuable. If your attention is cheap, then when you give it away, no one really appreciates it. So I just, I like to think of attention as the amount of time you spend doing it and the amount of focus you put into it. If you put a large amount of time and a large amount of focus into learning a trade or a skill or a language, then that means that your attention becomes more valuable because you could be doing that other trade or that other skill instead of giving your attention to someone that you're giving it to. And so when your attention value goes up, your attention value is more valued. And I think that's a lesson that we have to learn, which would help us not have emotional reactions when we deal with people like you're going to see in the next clip. Withholding sex from a man who is committed to you is similar to withholding his food and water. You can say this on this app. You can say this on this app filled with young, impressionable people, people who will take this seriously. The idea that if someone is committed to you, you owe them sex or it's like starving them. According to the app, that's fine. According to the algorithm, that's promoted. And according to the likes, some of y'all agree. But calling this rhetoric harmful and quite frankly dumb gets a guideline strike. So let me try again and let me make it crystal clear. You don't owe anyone your body for any reason. There is not a price to pay for someone being in your life. Not only is this rhetoric quite frankly stupid, but it is harmful for everyone, but especially women and especially the young women on this app. I do not support this. Feminism does not support this, but TikTok does. So the TikTok started with the young Caucasian lady saying that withholding physical affection from your husband is a tantamount to not giving him food or water. And then of course you heard the young lady come behind and say, that that is essentially, a, a, it is unlawful. We'll put it that way. And in a way, they both have a right to their opinion. And if you're an emotional person, you react emotionally, you say, oh no, you shouldn't be, blah, 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 blah. but that's not the way to look at it. The way I choose to look at it is very simple. I can give attention to one or the other. And if my attention is valuable, then Either I will induce a response in one or the other that is what I would prefer, or I just take away my attention and let things be what they are. In essence, the negotiation is relatively simple. It is not my job to make sure that people like me. It is not our job to be liked. It is our job to be productive, to be law abiding citizens, to be upstanding people. But it is not our job to make people like us and it's not our job to placate for the opportunity at physical affection. If there is a hoop to be jumped through, if I don't want to jump through the hoop, I don't jump through it. It's not something I choose to do. I want to be 100% clear and unequivocal about this. This young lady is 100% correct. She's 100% ethically right. She's 100% legally correct. If she's in a situation where she does not have the feeling or the passion for the person she's with and she just chooses not to be intimate, that is 100% her right. But also what comes with that is what if the other person in the relationship has leverage and says, well, maybe someone else will value my attention. If we as men increase our value of attention, then of course, there will be other people that will want to get in front of it. And so if you are in a situation and you don't have any leverage, i.e. you're giving your attention away, your attention is not valuable, you're begging for closeness, then you don't have any cards to play. The better thing to do is to be in a position where your attention has value, where your presence has value. And if you're in a not in a dating relationship for a while don't be in a dating situation for a while raise your value and then when you re-enter the dating space whether you stay where you are or whether you go overseas that value is going to shine through raise the value of your attention and then you could play hardball in negotiating this is the way i want the relationship to work is my way or we're not doing it thank you for playing Thanks for watching, like, subscribe.
uh, comment down below and let me know what you guys think and i'll catch you guys in the next video take care guys